Hi there, this is Amy. Thanks for joining me for this preview of the tracking and planning features of IBM Rational Team Concert, IBM Team Concert on Cloud, and IBM Track and Plan on Cloud. We'll just call it RTC for short. RTC is a complete tooling environment for task, change, and source configuration management that deals with some of the most typical challenges, like planning across distributed teams, dealing with wasted time in meetings, having little or no dependency management capabilities, lack of visibility into progress and status, no insight into process and planning improvements, changes to plans, problems discovered too late, and of course, delivery delays. Does this sound familiar? RTC does this by helping you stay focused on things like simple built-in collaboration in the context of the work you do, which really just means that if you use RTC to do your work, you're automatically collaborating. Fantastic. Having visibility into the status and progress of teams so that managers don't have to bug the people doing the real work. Information is live and available at a glance. Imagine no more spreadsheets. Helping you not only identify dependencies, but also track them and mitigate any risks that might cause delays. And finally, insight that shows you how well you're doing and where you might need to improve. And if you get stuck, RTC builds in guidance to help you learn a new process or understand what you need to do next. Ready to get started? Just click the Open Rational Team Concert button. You may be asked to log in to Jazz.net. That's the website that hosts the environment we're using. If you don't yet have a Jazz.net ID, just click Register Now. Pause this video while you submit the request. I have an ID, so I'm going to log in. We're looking at the JKE Account Management Dashboard. You should be saying the same thing that I do. If you don't see this, pause the video and try refreshing the screen until you can catch up to me. If you don't see these colorful widgets, you may need to click the login link on one of the report widgets on the dashboard to cause all of the widgets to render. You just need to do this for one of them. When you're ready, let's move on. You can think of RTC's dashboard as a landing page for all members working on a team, or in this case, a team of teams. Think of this program as if it were an orchestra, and this project area is the conductor. All of the teams that are part of this program play different instruments, and together they contribute to the overall symphony according to some plan led by the conductor. We'll take a look at what I mean by that in a minute, but first, first let's get to let, know the dashboard just a little bit better. The dashboard is like one-stop shopping to get all information relevant to planning and delivery of changes in the scope of a team like JKE Account Management. It can be tailored to have the content your organization cares about. On our dashboard, we have multiple tabs, as you can see across the top. We've created these tabs to hold the most important information that we think conductors need to see at a glance. You might have different widgets that you want to put on your dashboard. You might also want to create different tabs, like maybe role-based tabs. That's great. You can do anything you want on the dashboards. The tabs contain widgets, which are really just little pockets or pieces of information. Try clicking on each of the tabs so that you can view the different kinds of widgets. As you do, you'll see a combination of colorful colorful reports and links to plans and things like that. Basically, everything that you need to understand to get, the, get uh, an insight into the status of planning or delivery at different levels. Click on the Process Guidance tab. This is a really good example of how you might make information about your programs or team's process available to them so they don't have to remember it. It's always nice to have a little cheat sheet that you can go to from time to time. I said already, your dashboard can literally be anything you want. Okay, so let's move on. I mentioned those colorful widgets are reports. Let's dig into that a little bit. Click on the Program Overview tab. Let's explore the Roadmap Report, which is the one on the top right of the dashboard. On that widget's title bar, use your mouse to hover over the icons on the top right of the title bar until you find the Maximize button and click on that. Great, now there are no other widgets distracting us. Use your mouse again to hover over the bars on the graph and see quick information about the, what the graph is telling you. In this case, we're looking at the number of stories by team for each iteration on the program roadmap. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see the legend and the subtotals. 
Now click on any bar on this chart to get the details. I'm going to click on the longest bar. You can use the Great Rich Hover feature again to explore each of the details on this report without ever leaving the report or the dashboard. There's all kinds of information here that's useful. Cool, huh? For example, you can rich hover over the feature. That's the first feature on the, on the second uh, column in the report. And you can see this feature has children. You can also see that it's got a related test case. You can see when it's planned for and who owns it, all that information. You can do the same thing to take a look at stories. You can explore this later if you want and look at even some of the other reports. Okay, next up, work items. The key artifact in RTC is the work item, and that represents work and other things required to deliver changes to an application. In the dark blue mem menu bar at the top of the page, click on the work items menu option. You'll see a drop down menu with the work item types that are supported in RTC. This is where you go to create new work items and queries. RTC includes the most typical work item types any project needs, but you can add your own if you need to. You can also tailor the ones RTC delivers by removing and adding attributes, for example. But let's look at what comes out of the box. In the Work Items menu, click on Feature under the Create Work Items section. When you do this, the Feature Work Item Editor is displayed. Each work item has a summary. If you click in the Summary section, you can go ahead and try this out by typing new preview feature. Just trying to give you a little bit of a feel here. Let's explore some of the other attributes. So there's a filed against attribute. Use the drop down menu and see what options you have there. This attribute allows you to assign the work item to a group or to a team. Okay, now find the planned for attribute, which is in the second column, second attribute from the top. The planned for attribute actually shows you all of the iterations that are defined on your timeline. So sprints, um, um, sprint boundaries, the program increments as we call them on our timeline. By selecting one of these iterations, you're actually planning this feature for a specific iteration on the timeline. Okay. You get the idea. Across the top under summary, notice that this work item has additional tabs, overview, acceptance criteria, done criteria, links, approvals, and history. You can click through these tabs to get a better idea, but since it's a new work item, it's not very interesting at the moment. Click cancel, which is right next to the save button on the top right. Remember, we're in read-only mode, so you can't really create a new work item anyway. Click OK to acknowledge that you want to uh, leave your changes. On the Welcome to Work Item screen, let's explore the queries now. Click the Show Queries link and then the Shared Queries tab. RTC gives you a set of predefined queries established by the process you're using that might be the most interesting or useful queries. You can, of course, create your own as well. Find the Feature Done Criteria Status Query and click to run it. It's the fourth query on the list. This is an example of a query that prompts for filters before it runs. In this case, the query is looking for the iteration targeted for delivery for features. Select PI1 and then click the Run button. The list of features targeted for iteration PI1 is displayed. See the first feature on the list with ID 182? Use your mouse to hover over it and you can quickly see that it has child stories and also a related test case. We kind of saw this earlier with another feature. Scroll down in the hover screen to see the benefit hypothesis criteria of acceptance and the checklist, which actually represents the done criteria. You see how you don't actually have to leave the query to see details of any one of the work items that are in the query? Same sort of concept as we, as we saw earlier in the reports. Awesome. Okay, now click on the ID 182 to open this feature in the editor. Remember when we were in the feature editor a few minutes ago? This one's more interesting because this feature actually has stuff in it. Notice the quick information pane that's on the right. This pane gives you easy access to things like work items and other artifacts that are linked to this feature as well as subscribers. When you hover over the subscriber whose initial is A, you'll see that Al is a subscriber. That means that any change to this work item will send a notification to his mailbox. Pretty simple collaboration, huh? If there had been approvals requested or completed, you'd see those here as well. Notice the children links and see that they're grayed out. 
This indicates these work items are completed. Hover over them though, you can still see the details even though they're not, um, they're not active anymore. Now let's check out the history. Click on the history tab. The information shown here is a complete audit trail of all the changes made via this work item. Awesome. Just by doing your work and managing it via the work items, the audit trail is automatically captured. When you make changes this, to this work item, like change its state or reassign it, all of that audit trail is actually cap captured on the History tab. Okay, let's return to the Overview tab by clicking on it. Scroll down until you see the Large Benefit Hypothesis section. It's above the Discussion section. We don't have any benefit hypothesis specified, but what I want you to see is the rich text capability. So click in the box and you'll notice the rich text palette is displayed. If you want, pause the video for a minute and play around with the rich text. It's kind of cool. Now let's click in the discussion section and see how the collaboration works. If you wanted to collaborate with someone else on your team or even another team in this program or even in another program, you can simply use the at mention syntax to direct comments to them. Let's see how this works. You type, type the at sign and then use the control space button and a set of the most typical users that you have been conversing with shows up. You can see my name's on there and we see Pete and Al and Rebecca. You can also click the more users to search for someone else. Let's send a, a comment to Pete. We'll select Pete and we'll type RTC is so fun in case he doesn't know that. When you save your changes, what happens? Well, the comments preserved in the work item for one thing. Also, an email is sent to Pete to tell him that you mentioned him in a comment. Very nice. Easy collaboration right within a work item, which is what you're doing every single day. Okay, let's go check out planning now. In the blue menu bar, click the Project Dashboards menu option on the far left, and then click on the JKE Account Management Program to go back to the Program Dashboard. In the top right under the blue bar, there's a refresh icon. Go ahead and click that so we can get rid of the report that we were looking at earlier. Okay, let's explore planning. On our program overview tab, do you see the important plan views widget in the top left corner? This includes a handy dandy link to the program roadmap plan. This is the one that we probably would be using most often. So click on that link to open the roadmap plan in a new browser tab. Let's spend a few minutes exploring the details of this plan. You see the planned items section about halfway down the page? Under planned items, you'll find the view as drop down box where you currently see roadmap. Click anywhere in the entry field where, you, where it says roadmap to see all of the available views. Plan views are simply different ways to look at the same planning data. So RTC gives you multiple different views for you to see that data. It includes the ones that are most likely to be useful to you. As with anything in RTC though, you can add your own or change the ones that come out of the box. The Roadmap Plan view provides us with a tree view of features that have child stories and child tasks, essentially a work breakdown view. Let's take a look at the work items that are on the Roadmap. Find the first work item in the list and click the little twisty, which is the little arrow right next to its summary. When you click it, you'll see the child stories for this feature. You might need to scroll down a little bit to see all of it. If you wanted to expand or collapse the tree all at once, you can use the plus and minus symbols that are um, on the right of the plan. If you go a little bit further to the right, there's also an icon that allows you to easily export the plan to a CSV or comma separated values file. All of the columns in this plan view are completely configurable. In our view, you can see at a glance owners, status, the team that owns the work item, the iteration it's planned for, and so on. Okay, now let's take a look at the data from another perspective. Going back to the View As drop-down menu, change the roadmap to the Program Kanban view. In this view, you have a visualization of the features that are in the program and where they are in the process. Again, you might have to scroll down a little bit to really see what I'm talking about. You can control work in progress or WIP limits in this view. A WIP limit is a way of controlling the amount of work in progress based on your team's capacity to actually do something with it. This concept is grounded in lean principles, which say that you don't invest any time or resources on work if you won't have any time to follow through on it. What's the point of that, right? 
So you see the green and red boxes at the top? These are whip limits. Green means the whip limits are not exceeded and red means they are. If you want to begin incorporating lean principles into your planning process, this is a good view to use to ensure you're only working on things when you have capacity to focus on them. We'll go through more of that on a future preview. The Kanban view allows you to drag work items from one queue to the next. Go ahead and try it. Grab feature 191 that's in the draft lane, drag it into the analyzing lane, and then drop it. Pretty easy, huh? Now do that again. Drag it from analyzing to approved. Skip that ready for approval and go all the way to approved. Can't do it, huh? That's because the Kanban view prevents you from violating the process. That's how RTC can help your team do the right thing. Another feature of this view is the different colors. See the blue and the yellow? RTC allows you to add visual indicators based on attribute settings and tags. It's really flexible. Now scroll down a little bit further until you see the red card. Why is it red? Because the blocked attribute is selected. See that? Color makes it really easy to spot work based on some set of characteristics that you care about. And just like other parts of RTC, Rich Hover is also available here. Let's try that out. On that red card, hover over the feature 194. Now you can see the details of that feature. Same sort of capability that we saw earlier. Rich Hover is everywhere. Finally, you can edit things directly on the card. You want to change the owner? In this feature, click on Irene and you'll see a drop down of all the owners. You can change the owner right on the card. Go ahead and click on Bob. See, the owner was changed on the card. Love it. Well, that's it for this overview of RTC tracking and planning. There's so much more to discover, so I hope you'll poke around and see what you can learn all on your own. I hope we meet again on an upcoming preview.